Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with this week's conversation about resilience. But first, if you wish to create a better life and have a better career, then please visit michaelobrienshift.com and download your free workbook on how to create a better life. In it, you'll discover ways to find more energy for the things and the people who matter most to you so you can create a better tomorrow. Hey there, it's Michael. Welcome back or welcome to the Kintsugi Podcast. It's time for another conversation about resilience. Today, we are going to talk about something called adaptive versus agility, a $5 word coined by one of our listeners, Bobby Kuntz, great inspirational speaker and coach. But first, a story or at least an update, because you know on Kintsugi, we love to start with a story. So if you've been listening since the beginning of the year, you know I was planning this epic bike ride across the US, 45 days. 4,300 miles, calling it the Pause, Breathe, Reflect Tour because let's be honest, as a country, well, as a planet, we could pause, breathe, reflect a little bit more. Slow is fast, especially as we think about building a better tomorrow, a new normal, if you will. It was going to be this great celebration of my last bad day. 20 years ago, come July 11th, I was involved in a head-on collision, as many of you know, with an SUV when I was out training on my bike. I'm lucky to be alive. The doctors don't know how I survived. I call that day my last bad day. It's a day of remembrance, of celebration, of gratitude, of love, of kindness, resilience, community, energy, all of it. And we were going to do all that more as I rode my bike across the country. My wife was going to be in the RV. We would have our two dogs with us. It was going to be awesome sauce. I think today, the day I'm recording it, I was supposed to be in Missoula, Montana, heading towards Wyoming, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I was so looking forward to this trip. But fortunately, and I say fortunately, we had to pause the trip. We had to pause the pause, breathe, reflect tour because my left knee sent me a text because that's how we communicate nowadays and said, I'm not going. Ain't going to make the trip. Here's the deal. The reason for that text, it needs to be replaced. Now, coming out of the ICU when the doctors first told me about the extent of my injuries, which were life-threatening, as I mentioned, doctors don't know how I survived. They said, hey, Michael, you're going to have a lifetime of pain and suffering. You're probably never going to get back on your bike again. You're going to walk with a lot of limitations. You're going to have a tough life. And so I went dark initially, but then I realized through a mentor that all of our events are neutral until we label them. That's how I chose to label my last bad day. So I decided to make something of this moment. It was the big shift, if you will. And I got back on my bike and started racing and all that jazz. Last year, to help out 19 COVID charities, I rode 19 hours inside, which is crazy. Well, during that sort of prognostication of my life, if you will. They said, hey, you know what? Both knees are probably going to have to get replaced five years from now. So that would be 2006. And I'm happy to say that I've gotten 20 years out of both of them and the right one is still going strong. It can make it all the way to the end, whenever the end's going to be. The left one, if you've seen my Instagram post, you know I have bone on bone. I'm not in a lot of pain but the knee is not functioning well and I have a lot of stiffness. And not to get into all the gory details of my accident and the injury, it's better if we do this now than wait because if we wait, the leg could deteriorate a little bit differently and then I need custom parts and yada, yada, yada. So we're going to do it now. So I'm going to be young for a knee replacement. So I say fortunately because it would have been Such a heartbreak if I got, say, out in the middle of Kansas and I had to tap out. So I'm glad the left knee sent me that text when it did. So I have a date. Last week, I found out what the date was. It's going to be July 19th, eight days after the 20th anniversary. So this is good. I'm going to have a whole year, almost a whole year, to get the surgery done, rehab it, and we're going to do the tour next year. And it's going to be even 
more epic next year in 2022 because we're going to celebrate 21 years. Even more gratitude, love, and kindness, and energy, and resilience to celebrate. And this chapter of my life, this chapter of my story, and there's got to be another book coming out of this. I, I do believe this. It's a great lesson in something called adaptive versus agility. Again, that $5 word coined by Bobby Kuntz, great inspirational speaker. And it's the combination of adaptability, agility, and versatility. Sort of all plows right into resilience. And these are qualities that we're going to need more of, whether we're riding our bike across the country or just working in an office somewhere. In order to create a better tomorrow, we're going to have to be agile and adaptable and all that and more. And, you know, when I think back at this trip, you know, when I started at the beginning of the year, I had these grand plans. We we're mapping it out. I knew where I was going to be every step along the way. My wife was having fun doing her planning on her end. And the thing is that we've all experienced planning something and then it doesn't play out the way we want it to play out. It doesn't come to fruition. That is part of life. If we're playing in traffic or we're getting busy with life, we're going to have moments where it just doesn't work out. To paraphrase Robert Burns, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So the question isn't whether or not we'll have a moment like this. The question is, what do you do in the moment after the moment when you realize things are not going to work out the way you wish for them to work out? How quickly do you move from feeling what you need to feel to seeing this moment as happening for you, not to you. Now, when we pulled the plug, my wife and I sat down and we said, the knee's not going to make it. And we want to do this trip in the way that we wish to do this trip. We want it to be a happy trip. Because there's a fine line between crazy and stupid. For most of my friends and my clients, they think this is crazy. Who rides across the country? Not many people. But if you're doing it in such a way where it's totally gritting it out and you are noticeably in pain because we were going to document it, we to share it with the world, then it gets a little stupid. And I don't want to do stupid things. Crazy things, I'm all game for. Stupid, eh, not so much. So I was disappointed, no doubt, that we couldn't do it because I was really looking to do it. 20 years seemed like a good number to celebrate. I have 20 ways of being in my memoir. In, in my second book, My Last Bad Day Shift, I have 20 questions. We grew up playing 20 questions in the car when we go on vacation. So maybe the number 20 is sticking in, in my mind. But I do know this. The pause is all part of my journey. And again, as I mentioned, the trip next year will be even more epic. I'll be bionic. And in so many ways, my left knee will be better. It will function better than it is today. I might ride even better. The trip may be even more enjoyable. So right now I'm in prehab mode. And over the weekend, this past weekend, don't ask me why I did it, but I did it. Often when you get sick, right, you go to Google. Well, I went to YouTube and I binged a whole bunch of total knee replacement surgeries. And it confirmed everything I already knew. Orthopedic surgery is like carpentry. It is violent. It is messy and it's bloody. And so I watched a whole bunch and sure enough, it was messy and bloody and violent and the whole thing. I looked away a little bit. Some of it freaked me out. It's amazing what the knee can do when you're knocked out under anesthesia. It can really bend. And I'm hoping I can get more flexion because right now I can flex my knee about one degree more what is needed to ride my bike. And that's been the case for the longest time. So I saw also a whole bunch of videos on what to do before surgery, knee exercises, you know, little stretches, get the quadricep going. But I couldn't find any that really worked on mindset. How do you get your mind right before this or your mind right after it? And for that matter, the rest of your body, because a total knee replacement requires your full body to be as healthy as possible, your core, your upper body, your mind, as I just mentioned, it needs all that. So it was a pause, breathe, reflect moment. I was, as I was watching TV or YouTube on the TV. 
because I realized I have six weeks before my surgery. July 19th is the surgery date. And I decided I'm going to make the most of these six weeks to prehab in the best way, holistically, to make my mind as healthy as possible, my core, my upper body, my hips, my legs, my strength, all that. So I want to be the best patient when I come into that operating room. So we're going to get busy working on strengthening my mind and strengthening my body so I can be set up for success once the surgery is over. So this six weeks, call it spring training for any sports team, right? You want to work on your craft before the real games begin. And then I started thinking about life, our big events, like having a baby or getting married or having a big national sales meeting or perhaps creating our new normal. We spend so much time working up to the big event, like the to-do list, the racy charts, you know, who to invite to the wedding, getting the nursery all set. We do all that stuff, which are necessary things to do. And then we have the baby, we get married, we have the big sales meeting, all that and more, right? And then we don't pull it through. The hard work begins after the event is over. After you get married, that's when the hard work begins. After you have the baby, that's when the hard work begins. After the national sales meeting, the hard work is the sales execution. After the knee replacement surgery is over, the hard work is the actual rehab. But we don't necessarily set ourselves up. And a lot of that is all mindset and some strengths, strengthening our other qualities that we're going to need to pull through the big event. So so often we just focus on getting there and we don't develop a strong enough adaptive versus agility mindset. So we're not ready to put in the emotional labor to create the success after the event is over. So for the next six weeks, what I'm going to do on YouTube, if you don't follow me there, I hope you will. I'm going to put some videos there to help one, myself, document this journey towards my knee replacement and document maybe the six weeks after. And also to share this with other people to help others who might be going through something. It could be a surgery, it could be a knee replacement surgery or hip replacement, or it could just be anything to think about what do we need to do to get into alignment? Mind, body, and soul. And we'll throw our breath in there as well. So we can make the most of our moments in life because after all, our lives are just moments connected to other moments. It's helpful to be mindful in our moments. So I hope you'll go to YouTube, subscribe, look at those videos, share those videos because I'm sure you know someone, if it's not yourself, you know someone who's about to go in for a surgery of something or a health challenge. So this is all an effort to really help others prepare for their big event to have a little bit more adaptive versus agility. Because I know this, I can have the best plan for the next six weeks. But I also know this, that I'm going to need to be adaptable, agile, and have some versatility because it may not go exactly how I think it's going to go. That's the case leading up to it, maybe during the surgery and then after. It all sort of speaks to change. Now, I know a lot of people will say, people hate to change, right? You've heard that once or twice before. People don't like to change. And every time I hear that, I just cringe because I don't believe that people don't like to change. I think people like to change. They desire change. After all, we get married, we have babies, we hold meetings. We jump on our Peloton bikes to get more fit. We diet, we travel, we relocate. We even adopt pets during the pandemic. Just as an example, we adopted two cats. One of them just came back from surgery. So he's an interesting cat. So I don't believe that people don't like change. I think we're changing all the time. To be human is to change. I think a big thing about this statement about change, and this one thing is valid, is that People don't dig change that they feel is happening to them. We prefer to be in control. That's the story we tell ourselves. Even though every time we say, I want to be in control, I'm in control, the universe laughs at us 
the universe sort of laughed at me during my accident because I thought I was in control. And they're like, listen, we're going to give you something you cannot ignore. You're not in control. Give up control. Drop your banana. But it's the story we tell ourselves, that we want to be in control. It makes us feel safe, right? So let's take a step back, maybe a pause, breathe, reflect moment on this whole change thing and shift the story. So in so many corporate offices, people say, oh, people don't like to change. And again, it's baloney. People like to change. They just don't like feeling unsafe. They don't like that feeling, especially when things get uncomfortable, get challenging. It sort of comes down to fear. People don't like to be scared. So unsafe, scared, uncomfortable. And there's a way around it. So if we have the narrative that people don't like to change, we try to solve a different problem. But if we can get to the point that where the narrative is, people don't like to feel unsafe, people don't like to feel like they're scared, then we solve a different problem. And I think through that, looking at that problem, we can solve it through curiosity. So there are 10 questions I want to give you as we wrap up this conversation about resilience that can help. It can help you build resilience. It can also help you change on the things you wish to change. So here are the 10 questions. One is, what am I tolerating? Second one, what am I avoiding? Third one, what's good on the other side of uncomfortable? Greater purpose to get through that resistance. Number four, am I staying true to my vision and values, right? Your compass, the things, your values that help you make decisions. Here's the fifth one. What kind of ripple do I wish to ripple? Sixth one, what feels unsafe about taking action? Let's name it. Name it to claim it, right? So then we can do something about it. Six or seventh, rather. What can I say no to in order to say yes to my goals? This is addition through subtraction. So saying no to something frees up the space so you can go after your goals. Number eight, what have I done in the past that I could use today? Because we have fallen down in the past and we found a way to get back up. We found wisdom. So what can we use in the past right in this moment? Number nine, how is this moment happening for me, not to me? And here's number 10. How can I develop more adaptive versus agility? That $5 word that Bobby coined. When we ask ourselves these questions, if we get into a mode of being curious, then the fear can ease. Because with fear, there's also the associated risk. And there's a beautiful acronym I like with risk. Realizing I'm strong and knowledgeable. And we got this. We have a lot of the answers within us, or at least we know where to go to get some of the answers. Maybe some of the people in our Peloton. So there you have it. A little update on my knee replacement. It's coming six weeks away. And I'll keep you updated through the Kintsugi podcast on the journey I hope you'll subscribe to YouTube to just watch it, watch what happens. I can't promise we're going to get video footage of the surgery. I'm not sure if they're going to allow that, but I will update you all as we go forward. And I invite you to pause, breathe, reflect on how you can adopt, gain more adaptive versus agility, because it's three things, adaptability, agility, and versatility that we're going to need more of as we go forward so we can become more resilient. And with that, as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for being a member of our Kintsugi Peloton. Until next week, I hope you'll pause, breathe, reflect often, hop off your hamster wheel and just take a break. And of course, have fun storming the castle. I'll talk to you next week.